We've been able to do astrophotography with our iPhones for quite some time now. And I've always said that the best camera app for astrophotography with your iPhone is the camera app. Have a look at these two photos here. One was taken with the iPhone camera app and one was taken with Astro Shader. To get to the bottom of this, we're gonna go back just a little bit. If you are new here, you may not even know that your iPhone can do this with your camera app. Just put your phone onto a tripod, go to the yellow button at the top left-hand corner. That's your night mode. It's going to give you three photos of 10 seconds each and stack them on top of each other. Once you've set it up, push the button and it will take those photos, give you one photo at the end of the day. It's going to align everything and it's going to be a pretty good photo. I've always said this is the best way to do it. There is, however, a pretty good downside to this. One is the way that it looks. The overall image, you can tell immediately when you've been doing this for a little while, that was taken on an iPhone because of the way it meters. It's got this kind of vignette around the whole image. And that's just the way that the iPhone meters the sky. So I'd like to find an app that gets rid of that and Astro Shader does. If you are not familiar with Astro Shader, it's an app that I reviewed quite some time ago and I put it out there mainly because it's good for older iPhones and I hadn't actually thought to try it on a newer phone. If you think of the camera app of Astro, Astro Shader, somewhere between the camera app and a Google Pixel and a Samsung Galaxy, you've probably got it. That is, it's going to be relatively easy to use. It has some manual controls and it stacks and aligns all the stars for you, just like a pixel does. And it ends up with a pretty bloody good photo, I think. Let's have a look at it. Oh, and the other thing is it takes an awful long time to take a photo. If you want to get a good result, I've got a photo being taken over there right now that has been going since I started recording this video. <laughs> I'll show you what I mean in a sec. Okay, this is Astro Shader. This is what the interface of Astro Shader looks like. First of all, on this screen here, you've only got the focus. That's all you need to worry about with this particular screen. And you can bring it up with the uh, plus and minus there, if you like, and you can fine tune it. Uh, and I can probably fine tune it a little bit more. Point eight is where I start at with pretty much every phone, to be honest. But uh, that's where we're doing it here tonight. And you might think, well, that's pretty obvious. It's there's nothing else there to do, but it's not. If you go down to that gear icon there, this is where you set up the photo that you want. And when we think about what astrophotography is and how you're going to get the better photos from astrophotography is what I mean, the best way to do it is stacking images. The iPhone does it with the camera app. It just doesn't do it, it does it well for a foot in the door, but it doesn't do it as well as many other apps and certainly many other phones. So, the idea of this is that we're going to take multiple images all by itself. We're just going to program the app to do that. Take multiple images, set the exposure time for each one and the ISO for each one, the ISO being the light sensitivity of the sensor. We ideally would have that lower so there's not as much digital noise in the final image. Um, and that's really about it. Um, we can have a look down here at the timers and stuff. I just two seconds is fine. You can do this on all cameras on the iPhone. So think about nebula stuff. When Orion comes back around, we could use the telephoto lens on here because Orion, you can get the nebula of Orion fairly easy with most phones. So we could use a telephoto here and do exactly the same thing with multiple images and program it this way and it will do it all by itself. It's kind of like having a tracker on your phone as in a star tracker but not having one. Other, other um, uh, options here are saving it as an interval or saving different intervals. This will be a good idea if you are someone who has a problem with lots of flights, star, uh, um, um, airplanes, satellites, that sort of stuff. Here, generally, it's not too bad. I just deal with the satellites as they come, but there's no, very rarely is there planes flying over here. And that's it. So how are we gonna set up this photo? I could look at this here and do 50 at 10 seconds each, um, which is an awful long photo. Um, we'll bring it back for the sake of what we're doing here, what we're just talking about this here. Actually, no, we'll leave it there at 50. We'll bring it back down to 50. That slider, you can do a lot. Yeah, so we could sit here for hours doing a thousand photos. It's probably going to go out of frame by the time that's done. But I would suggest you could do a hundred or so at 
shorter um, shutter speeds here, or exposure time. We'll bring that back down to 50. And we might just bring this down. I will leave that at 10 seconds as well, actually. I think 10 seconds is a good amount of time for doing this. And ISO, leave it about 600. You can take it as high as you want, and bring it as low as you want. The difference is the higher you go, the nice and bright, and it's gonna pick up more stars for you, but it's going to bring digital noise into the image, bring it down too low. Uh, it's going to not pick up as many stars, but you're not gonna have much noise. So it's a way up. Well, you gotta weigh up those options, you know? So uh, 600 is, is good. Um, so now we'll close that and down the bottom in the center is the shutter button. We hit that and we wait. Hey, if you're new here, I'd love for you to subscribe to the channel. We are about 94, 95,000 at the moment. We're closing on 100,000. So if you're into this sort of tutorials, as well as tech reviews, this is a channel that you probably want to follow. Let's get back to this camera. It's not all beer and Skittles though. There are, well, there is a significant downside to this. And that is the foreground. This phone has just taken 10 photos at 10 seconds each. So it takes some time and things are moving through the sky. It can't differentiate between the foreground and the sky. So as the stars are moving, it's also moving the foreground elements and really screwing it up. So this is no, this is not a great app. You can do it, you just have to do it in Photoshop later of a foreground image and, a, and, the, and the star image. But uh, versus the, uh, the iPhone camera app, this is not as good for the foreground elements as well. I think this is probably better for the stars, but not for the foreground elements. So you've got to work out your shoot before you actually go there. There is a huge upside to this, besides having really good images of the stars, and that is it's free. <laughs> I can't believe something like this on, on, in today's App Store is free. So head over to the App Store, grab that, and go for it. So what do you think? Do you think you're going to use this Astro Shader? It's free. Give it a go. It can't hurt. Anyway, guys, that's it for today. I'll catch you later.